Okay, moving on with section, whoa, ghosting, Blah, there we go. Moving on with section 1-4 here. Uh, we talked in class yesterday, or Tuesday, depending on what day you watch this, about ex local and absolute extrema. We also talked about intervals of increasing and decreasing. So I'm not going to talk about those two things in the video, but uh, what we have not talked about is average rate of change. It's the last thing in section 1-4. So average rate of change is a fancy way of simply saying find the slope. So we're kind of going back to a, a different application of the same slope you learned about in 7th and 8th grade. Uh, you know slope is m. You may have learned it as rise over run, which is great if you're looking at a graph. Uh, but if you want to work out the formula, it's your change in y over change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is all review. Average rate of change is the same thing. You're still finding slope. It's just worded a little bit differently. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a function, and this is generic. So let's say I gave you some f of x, and then I gave you some interval. If I remember interval, this is not an ordered pair. That means I'm going from, this thing right here is saying I'm going from x equals a to x equals b. Um, so on some interval, and I'll give you the numbers, you plug into this formula, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And you'll get some numeric answer in the end. So let's try a few examples of this using that formula for average rate of change. Um, so looking at number one here, let me move two out of the way a little bit. Okay, I gave you a function, x squared minus x, and then I'm giving you x equals zero and x equals two. And remember, we're finding slope. And if you remember, slope is change in y over change in x. So what I've done is I've given you the x's. You have to find the y's to go with it. And you get the y's by plugging in 0 and 2 for the function. And that's exactly what this top is right here. f of b and f of a gives you the y coordinates. So following my formula, my average rate of change for number 1, which we'll call a rock, average rate of change, is f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. That's your change in y over change in x. And then we'll simply plug that in. f of 2, we'll do that one in blue. 2 squared is 4, minus 2, minus, and then f of 0 is 0 squared, minus 0. And I'm plugging in for my x's right here, all divided by 2 minus 0. And then we follow order of operations. 4 minus 2 is 2, minus, that's a bunch of zeros, over 2 minus 0, that's 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Uh, and I went, it, I, I did that in bloody detail. You may be able to skip some of the arithmetic and, and jump maybe straight to the second or third step. I'm okay with that. But that is how you find average rate of change. It's f of b minus f of a. In this case, it was 2 and 0 over 2 minus 0. Then you work it out to get some number answer, and that's your average rate of change. Okay, number 2 is a little bit uglier. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing. It's f of 6 minus f of 2 over 6 minus 2. Now, I'm really smart. I know that the denominator is going to be 4. 6 minus 2 is 4. Just trust me. We'll talk about that in class tomorrow if you, if you have a hard time understanding that. The numerator, though, is a little bit tougher. Uh, f of 6 and f of 2, this is going to be kind of tough because 6 cubed is a big number. So you are going to be allowed to use calculators on this stuff. And I've already punched this in my calculator. f of 6, I've thrown that in my calculator already. f of 6 is 582. And all I'm doing is I'm plugging 6 in for my x's. And then f of 2, which I've already plugged in, is 22. So I have 582 minus 22. That's 560 divided by 4. 560 divided by 4 is 180. And that is your average rate of change for number 2. f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Um, okay, so I have two more examples of this stuff. And I'm slowly going to get a little bit more complex. Notice I have a fraction here, which y'all hate fractions. You're just going to have to get over that. Um, so I'm going from 5 to 12. So I'm going to do f of 12 minus f of 5 over 12 minus 5. And then I need to plug in 12, and I need to plug in 5. So uh, let's see. If I plug in 12, f of 12, I'll do that one in red. 12 minus 3 is 9 divided by x is 12 minus, and then in green I'll do the 5, f of 5. 5 minus 3 is 2, divided by 5, 
and this is all going to be divided by 7. Uh, now we have to clean this up, and you don't like fractions, but I'm going to show you a little trick. Uh, first, 9 over 12 will reduce. I'm going to change 9 over 12 to 3 fourths to make my fraction just a little bit smaller. Um, now the rest of it is going to stay the same, minus 2 fifths over 7. And what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier for you is I'm going to look at all three of my terms. I have a 3 fourths, I have a 2 fifths, and I have a 7, which 7 is over 1. So 7 divided by 1, and I look at my common denominator for all three of those. I have a 4, a 5, and a 1. And when I look at that, my common denominator for all three of those terms is 20. So what I will do is I'm going to multiply my numerator and my denominator by 20. So times 20, times 20 on the bottom. And what's going to happen here is we're going to get some nice, sexy cancelage. Um, so, and I'll do this one in bloody detail again. So this is 3 fourths, and I'm going to distribute the 20. So 3 fourths times 20, minus, and then 2 fifths times 20. And then divided by 7 times 20. So every single thing gets multiplied by 20. And what's going to happen here is 4 will divide into 20. I'm going to cancel, and that will leave me with 5. And I know that 3 times 5 is 15. So I got rid of that fraction. On the next one, 5 goes into 20 four times. And I know that 2 times 4 is 8. Uh, now, in the denominator, nothing's going to cancel, but I do have 7 times 20, and that's going to be 140. And in one step, I was able to get rid of those fractions within fractions. Uh, so 15 minus 8 is 7 divided by 140. Hey, that's even going to cancel. That's going to reduce to 1 over 20. And so there is... Um, there is your average rate of change. It's a little bit ugly because of fractions. Your other option would be to combine these two fractions, get a common denominator, and then when you divide, you have to flip and multiply, which will work, and you will end up with 1 20th. I just think this is a little bit of an easier way. Multiply everything on top and bottom by the common denominator. And 20 divided by 20, that's what I actually multiplied by. 20 divided by 20 equals 1. And as long as you're multiplying by 1, that's okay. So I didn't break any rules. Math League of America is still happy with this. Um, and I have one more example. f of x equals x squared minus 1. And then I gave you something bizarre here. I didn't give you any numbers. I gave you a and a plus h. So when I do my average rate of change for this one, it's going to get a little bit ugly. You just have to be real careful with your work. It's f of, and my second term is a plus h. So f of a plus h minus, and then f of a over a plus h minus a. So there is my formula for average rate of change. And then we have to plug that in. So let's do f of a plus h first. And I'm going to do this kind of slowly. I will plug a plus h in for the x. So it's going to be a plus h all squared. And that plus 1 is just going to come along for the rod. And then I will do minus See, so there's what I got when I plugged in a plus h. Now in green, I'm going to plug in a. So I take out the x, and I'm going to plug a in its place. So that's going to leave me a squared and plus 1, and there's no, I don't have to do anything with that 1. On bottom, um, let's see, the parentheses aren't really accomplishing anything, so I have a plus h minus a. And now we have to clean this up, and there's going to be a lot of cleaning up. Uh, let's square out a plus h squared. Remember, you have to FOIL that. So my numerator is going to be a squared plus 2ah. Remember, a plus h squared means a plus h times a plus h. And you should know how to do that. So a, plus a squared plus 2ah plus h squared plus 1. Uh, there's nothing to do with the green. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and distribute that negative. It's minus a squared minus a 1. And then my denominator, ah, oh, look at this, look at this, a plus h minus a, the a's cancel, leaving me with only an h. And then we start cleaning this up, and there's a little bit of cancelage here. Notice uh, a squared minus a squared cancels. Notice plus 1 minus 1 cancels, and I'm left with 2ah plus h squared, all divided by h. 
And then I have one final step before I'm through with this one. I'm going to factor the h out of the numerator. It leaves me with 2a plus h. I still have an h in the denominator. Those h's cancel. And I can cancel now because it's multiplication. So it's h times stuff. I can cancel that h with that h. And finally, after a buttload of work, we are left with 2a plus h. And that is your answer for the average rate of change. There we go. Ten minutes. I guess that wasn't too bad.